Well, Midgel Asset News, today what I want to talk to you about is resilience. And as we can take a look at, there are some projects that are resilient and make it through these bear markets. And they come out the other side and they are all the better for it in the bull market. The thing is just to pay attention to what's going on around you. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll take a look at a little bit of history as far as what has been resilient, what has not. I'll also take a look at uh, the things that are, are really growing as time has gone on. And then also we'll take a look at what I like to call regression, because it's not so much to take a look at what is thriving, but we'll also take a look at what is potentially dying. And we'll go over all those things. But first, let's take a look at uh, exactly what we're talking about here for the history. So the history itself, there's a great website. I linked in the description below, uh, coinmarketcap.com forward slash historical. And I want to take you back all the way to May 5th, 2013. A lot of you weren't even in this in, in this market. I wasn't in the market until 2017 personally. But if you take a look here on May 5th, 2013, here's the top 10. And pretty much this was it. And you had Bitcoin as number one, as it always has been. And who knows if it always will be, but that's just where we're at. Litecoin was number two, and the rest of these I've never heard of in my life. Uh, Namecoin, Peercoin, Feathercoin, I don't know what these are, what they do, the supply, uh, the market cap. It's just, you know, a little bit, uh, a little bit crazy. Look at that. Litecoin with a market cap of a whopping uh, $62,298,217 in 2013. Namecoin, six, <laughs> six million. That's laughable. So, again, these things that are, that are out here. And, and during this time frame, trust me, people were talking about how great those those projects were and how they would last forever. Not so. Now let's jump down to December 7th, 2014, see what we got. Well, a little bit more has grown here. We've got Bitcoin at a whopping $375, XRP at a penny, Litecoin. But again, do you remember, do you take a look at these and go, oh, I remember these. BitShares, MadeSafeCoin, Dogecoin still there. Hey, look at that. NXT, Stellar, Namecoin, Dash. Supernet, Monero, still around. And the rest of these, I have no idea what the heck they are. They just don't, I, I've never heard of them. Now let's jump forth to 2017. Let's let's take a look at, you know, pretty much the peak of uh, the second four-year cycle. We take a look at uh, roughly December 10th. Uh, not the peak, but pretty close. Bitcoin, 15,000. Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash. IOTA, IOTA was in the top, in the top four. XRP, Litecoin, Dash, Monero, NEM. Remember NEM? Yeah, neither do I. Cardano, Ethereum Classic, Ugh, Neo, Stellar, EOS. BitConnect was in the top 20, and it was a Ponzi scheme. Tether, Monocoin. So you get where I'm, where I'm going with this. Pay attention to the things that are going on around because a lot of these coins are not going to be here, which leads me to my next point, which is this, resilience. And... If we take a look here, resilient, what is looking at resilience? Well, first of all, let's take a look at the number one, which has always been number one, Bitcoin. And there's a great website, look into bitcoin.com, link in the description. You can see this thing called Bitcoin hash rate. This is the amount of computational power that is put out by the network with all the different mining rigs that are out there as they push forth and try to mine Bitcoin for every block, every 10 minutes. And we can see here that the hash rate uh, has fallen from its all time high. And we can see the hash rate here at uh, exahashes or how uh, an incredible amount of, of, of computational power and electrical power that is being used. But we've, we've tapered off since December 13th. And actually, we tapered off starting in November. Uh, one of those was, of course, the crash of, uh, of FTX. And that led to the price of Bitcoin going down. Remember, these Bitcoin miners, they have to sell Bitcoin because they have overhead. And it took a big dump. Now, over here in, in December, what the heck happened? Well... One of the things that happened here is that in Texas, uh, my home state, or my state that I, I, I vacation quite frequently, right now we are living in Puerto Rico, uh, we've had a, a huge cyclone, cyclone bomb, and that's throughout the whole nation. And I, I think uh, different parts of the world are, are, are feeling it, but uh, we've had to have miners shut off their mining rigs because that's what Bitcoin miners do in Texas. When we... When the, when the grid itself needs electricity, the Bitcoin miners shut off. And it's a, it, it, it's a great synergistic environment. And of course, that, that electricity goes to the home users, allows them to heat their house. So we've seen a lot of, uh, of, a, of a big drop-off 
with Bitcoin miners. Does that mean that uh, Bitcoin mining operation, which I think is, is, is the heart of course in Bitcoin, does that mean we're, we're seeing a drop off? No, super resilient. This is, a, this is a tweet from Riot Blockchain, one of the biggest uh, Bitcoin mining operations, especially in Texas. This is just on December 22nd for Pete Saves. They just rolled out a shipment of 5,000 S19 XP miners into Texas. And they are putting those up in their uh, Rockdale plant, and they're going to fire those things up. So pay attention not only to the products that are resilient, but the companies behind those projects that are doing the right things to keep the lights on, to grow and expand, even in this junk bear market, because they're going to crush it in the bull market. And also, uh, just a little side note, I find this very interesting. And I had talked about this before, and, I, and this is when uh, there was a big uh, cold front in Europe. And I said, hey, if you're a Bitcoin miner, why don't you just heat your house with your Bitcoin miners? And people laughed at me like, you're dumb. Why would anybody do that? Well, here you go. This is a space design warehouse. And uh, he's got a Bitcoin channel or a, a YouTube channel, crypto channel. Check him out. Just take a listen to what he, what he says here. Clear camera, as you can clearly see, I'm pumping hot Bitcoin air into the air intake. And then if we go out into the living room, look at that. Look at that hot vent. I mean, it's not that hot, but it's putting out 71 degrees, 72 degrees. Here's the kitchen one. We go into the bedroom. Beauty. 71 and a half degrees. We'll go into Billy's room. Where is his vent? Look at that. Hot vents. So, with just one Bitcoin miner, maybe two if you live up north right now where it's evidently colder than zero degrees Fahrenheit, you can send hot air all throughout your house. And because of the replacement fan, it won't be all that loud. Right. So, again, I don't see a problem here. I mean, if you're going to, if you need electricity anyhow, and uh, you have a Bitcoin miner, why don't you just heat your whole house? Uh, essentially, uh, that's what I see. Now, that doesn't work in, in all situations. And there's a question down here which says, hey, how many square feet is your home? Because if it's like, you know, 500 square feet, of course, that would make sense. Are you running the ASIC on its standard settings or are you overclocking? And Space Design says, look, my house is 1,400 square feet. To be fair, I'm in Orlando, Florida, but it's been in the 30s here. 30s, which in Florida is pretty cold. And yes, right now, all everything is on stock settings, about 3,000 watts. So I just found this interesting that uh, there's, a, there's a dual use here uh, for Bitcoin. And lastly, um, when we talk about resiliency, just take a look at just how early we are. This is a great pick from next Bitcoin halvings. And if you haven't known, I'm a big believer in four-year cycles. Do you know that we're only in the third halving, essentially? Uh, the, the next halving, the fourth one, is until 2024, somewhere around March, maybe April, who knows. But uh, we're still sitting at a, a block word of 6.25. And you can just see that this will only be the fourth one. Look how far, much farther we have to go. So if you understand just how early we are and just understand that these, we have a lot of room to grow, there's a lot of bright side in the markets. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. And lastly, I just want to finish up to pay attention to the projects that are, that are regression wise. Because if you're not growing, unfortunately, you are dying. And this was a tweet from uh, Eric Wall. I follow him. I'll block your eulogy. But he says, hey, Solana, the total value locked up dropped or TVL dropped by 98%. And I was like, is that? true? I don't think that's that can be right. So if I take a look uh, over here, this is uh, DeFiLama.com, link in the description, you can find it yourself. And this is the total TVL. Solana at its peak had roughly $10 billion locked up in Solana. And of course, everything that happened with uh, FTX and things that are going on, I mean, the whole market is down. We'll take a look in a second. But you can see that it went from $10 billion to a measly 9 214 million dollars that is uh, 98 percent roughly now if we take a look at uh, on, on the flip side and just take a look at let's just look at all this is all all the tvl and things that are that are locked up as far as DeFi. you're looking at 213 billion dollars of what it was now we're at 45 uh, billion dollars that's about an 80 percent reduction okay livable ethereum same type of thing, just Ethereum itself had around 117, now it's at 26 billion, so roughly 80%, but we can see here, 98% is quite a bit. 
And uh, that's not it. Also, there are some other projects that are jumping ship. Top Salon NFT products find new homes on Ethereum and Polygon. Uh, these two projects, they're NFTs. I'm not a big fan of NFTs, but sure. Projects D Gods and Utes are moving away from the network. Both products announced on Twitter on Monday. Here essentially is the tweet. D Gods will officially bridge to Ethereum in Q1. The bridge is not the destination. It's in the path to get there. And it's not multi-chain as a lot of people have, have uh, say here, hey, please consider multi-chain to allow one-way NFT bridge. And they're like, no, we're just going to do away with that. So DeFi said it will bridge over to Ethereum in the first quarter of 2023, while Utes will move to Polygon, also in the upcoming first quarter. I like the, uh, the idea of Polygon myself. Details the bridge will be released when it's ready and tested. This has never been done before at this scale. Both products tweeted on Monday. We want to make sure it's airtight. Degods and Utes, the two most traded Solana NFT collections in the OpenSea marketplace. Degods floor price stood at 790 sold, which is, that's a lot, 8,900 which would have been a heck of a lot more at its all-time high. And then Utes is about 215 sold floor price. So again, I'm not saying that uh, Solana is dead, but I'm just saying that uh, just pay attention to the ones that uh, are dying. Because again, if you're not growing and pushing forward, what are you doing? That's just where we're at. And that's it. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. We will probably do a live stream later today. I'm trying to work my way up to doing one recorded video and one live stream, a lot of things that are going on here. I just need to keep myself busy and that's all we got. So again, like, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it and I'll see you in the next one.